You ever hear this idea that we have five to 10 to 20 pounds of toxic poop stuck in our colons? So today we're going to talk about if that's actually a myth or if there's some truth in it. Now, I have done every cleanse that has ever been invented. I've done colonics. I've done colemas, which is a combination of an enema and a colonic, which was invented by Bernard Jensen, who wrote the book on colon cleansing. I went to his home. He lived in a trailer in San Diego, and uh, I bought his kits, and I've done many of his colonics over the years. And looking back at that, the problem was I never fixed my diet. So you'd go on a seven-day kind of a colema cleanse where you're doing this colema twice a day, morning and at night, and then you're not eating any food. You're taking psyllium seed, apple juice, which is filled with sugar, and a bunch of vitamins. And literally, I was starving because my blood sugars were up and down because of the apple juice. I never got into ketosis. And I was just dreaming about eating a pizza because they never told you to consume electrolytes or sea salt. So I was so craving something salty. And little did I know I was very deficient in sodium. And that was actually quite dangerous to drink all this fluid and then to eliminate all this fluid. So you really need to know what you're doing if you're going to do a colon cleanse. Now, how much toxic material is actually in someone? Uh, could it be 5, 10, 20 pounds? Maybe with some people, but I don't think it's the average. I think the average person who eliminates between 14 to 16 ounces of poop a day usually does not have an impacted colon or constipation. Now, that's a generality. You know, a lot of people do have constipation and they could be holding a lot more waste. However, I do not think it's like 10 or even 20 pounds. Now, in practice, there was one lady who came in to see me that was severely constipated. She was going to the bathroom once a month. I'm not kidding. And so, yes, she probably had more than 20 pounds of impacted poop in her gut. But of course, when I did the evaluation, I found that her diet wasn't that great. And uh, after I got done explaining what to eat, uh, she left and I never saw her again. But when she checked out at my front desk, I went to lunch and I went outside and I saw her car there. And I walked by her car and I happened to notice in the back seat, uh, it was filled with empty wrappers of Burger King, McDonald's, KFC. I mean, she didn't even shoot them in the garbage. She stuck them in the back seat. So I think that had something to do possibly with um, her constipation problem, as well as her toxicity. But I think the average person has this idea that stool or waste is always toxic, maybe because it has an unpleasant smell. But think about what's happening. You're having billions of microbes breaking down your food. And if the diet is poor, you're going to have more of one microbe than another. And those microbes give off certain gases that then have bad odor. But if someone's fairly healthy and they're eating correctly, they should not produce those very unpleasant gases that uh, other people might produce. Even when someone has really bad breath, whether it's a sulfur smell or like a sewage breath, that smell is not coming from toxins. It's coming from the gases produced by certain microbes that the person has an overgrowth. And it's the overgrowth of certain microbes or yeast or, or fungus that are producing that bad odor. And, you know, some people have this idea that they just need to flush out and cleanse all this waste so then they can be healthy and clean. But what happens when you're flushing out all these microbes doing a colonic or some herbal um, laxative, you're also flushing out all this friendly bacteria that you need to help you digest the food. It's kind of like taking antibiotic. One of the big side effects is constipation. We depend on these microbes to help us, especially with the consistency of our stool, as well as the frequency as well. You know, just like if you're going to build a garden and you're going to make a compost pile, that material in the compost cannot break down unless you have like manure, like animal waste, which has all the microbes. If the microbes are not in that material, it will just sit there. It will not break down. It won't decay. 
So we really need these microbes, in, mostly in the large intestine, to help us break down things. So in the digestive system, we have a, a lot of things that help us uh, break food down. We have the stomach acids. We have the enzymes that are produced by our stomach and our pancreas and by our small intestine that act on the food in the small intestine. We have help from the liver and the gallbladder producing the bile that helps us break down fat. So all these things contribute to helping breaking down food and then having it end up as waste. But you have to realize that that waste product is alive. It's alive with over 100 billion microbes just in one gram and 100 million viruses per gram. And when you're sick, the viral loads can go up to a trillion per gram. But these viruses I'm talking about are friendly viruses that keep the bacteria in check. They don't affect our body. They kill bacteria to prevent the overgrowth of bacteria. So you have this interesting balancing mechanism. The point is that we need these microbes desperately in the absorption of food and for our immune system and for many other reasons like making vitamins. But most of the microbes are in the large intestine. And as things work, you have this very long tube from your stomach all the way down to the rectum that is acting on this food when you eat. And normally at any given time, you should have about like one pound of, of material going through your system. Because think about what's happening. This food is constantly uh, breaking down and being absorbed, okay? Because a lot of food uh, has water in it, for example. Like even steak is over 50% water. And the body is reabsorbing all this material through the small intestine. So 90% of the digestion occurs in the small intestine. So it's like sucking out nutrition, uh, amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates. It's sucking it out through the layer of your small intestine and even a large intestine too. And it's going right into your uh, lymphatic system and your circulatory system. So just because you consume one pound of food, it doesn't end up as one pound of waste. And then when the undigested particles end up in the large intestine, the microbes act on those and turn those into a certain type of fat, small chain fatty acids that give you energy, that feed your colon, that help your blood sugars. So you have this incredibly dynamic activity that's happening with this wave or pumping action, it's called peristalsis, that's supposed to push the material through this digestive system and have each part do a different thing. Certain parts of your small intestine, for example, will start to absorb trace minerals, for example. Certain parts of the digestive system also help reabsorb bile salts, which by the way, give the stool its color brown. If you don't have enough bile salts, your stool becomes lighter or pale or gray colored or even tan. Also, if there's not enough bile, things become more constipated. If there's too much bile, things become looser. You get diarrhea. So all of these different factors can act on the material that's going through your system. Having diverse types of fibers, like different types of vegetables, can help increase the different microbes if you're always eating one vegetable only, your microbes are not going to be as diversified. And so if someone's constipated, they really need to look at microbes like probiotics, as well as fiber. But I'm not talking about Metamucil or psyllium husk. I'm talking about actual food fiber from vegetables. And when I'm talking about a probiotic, you can do um, probiotics in foods like sauerkraut, for example, has a lot of good bacteria, other fermented vegetables, other fermented dairy like kefir, or you can buy a good probiotic. Now, to be totally transparent, I do sell a high quality probiotic, but you can find a probiotic anywhere. Just make sure it's high quality and it survives the stomach. So there's a few important things you need to understand about this topic. Number one, the solution to either constipation or diarrhea always relates to your diet. So if you are constipated and you're trying to add more vegetable fiber to your diet and that doesn't work, and let's say you take a probiotic and it still doesn't work, I'm not opposed to taking a herbal laxative because that's a lot better than a medication, but just realize the underlying cause of that constipation 
definitely relates to your diet. There's something not right in your diet. Maybe you need more bile salts because your liver is too fatty and it can't produce the bile salts. Maybe you need more stomach acids or for example, more sea salt, which is sodium chloride to help you build more hydrochloric acid, or even you need more enzymes because the pancreas is too exhausted because of the constant introduction of carbohydrates. So anyway, I wanted to clear up some of these interesting ideas people had in relationship to toxic poop and to give you the understanding that not everyone has you know, pounds and pounds of toxic material in their colon that they need to flush out with a pill. You really need to figure out the diet because that's really the ultimate correction of digestive problems. Now, if you haven't seen my video on how to use foods to detoxify your liver, I put that up right here, check it out.